Good afternoon, the midday news about Baton de Bolatito is my name. The Independent National Electoral Commission has insisted on the 15th of this month deadline is set for the submission of lists of governorship and House of Assembly candidates by political parties. The deadline was set in line with the timetable and schedule of activities for the 2023 elections by the electoral umpire. It cautioned political parties that conducted valid governorship and House of Assembly elections, primary elections, to adhere strictly to the timetable as the nomination portal was shut down on the 15th. In a statement signed by the INEC National Commission and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Costa Sukui, Commission urged the parties to scrutinize the personal particulars of the candidates before submission. On the issue of voter registration, the Commission said the continued voter registration will continue nationwide and all the resident electoral commissioners and electoral officers have been directed to continue with the exercise pending further directives from the commission. <clears throat> Traditional rulers and chiefs in the Lee and the Sokoloko government area of the state of Fashun have pledged their support for the re-election of Governor Dibuiga Uyetala in the forthcoming governorship election. The community leader stated their positions during the campaign tour of the governor to the area said their decision was born out of the laudable achievement recorded by Governor Yetola across the state. Governor's office correspondent, Sayon Narendi, has more of the trip. Wale local government area, Ire Wale North, East Local Council Development Area, Ishokan Local Government Area, as well as Ishokan South Local Council Development Areas in the state of Oshun erupted into frenzy excitement as the All Progressive Congress Party supporters welcomed Governor Adebo Yegao Yetola campaign train into the Asian towns of Ikiri, Akpomo, and Ikoyi amid dancing and singing delightful party lyrics at the Palace of Alakpomo of Akpomo, as well as Akiri Palace. Governor Adebo Yegao Yetola who received royal blessings from the royal fathers and chiefs reassured them of his commitment towards transformational developments as well as overall welfare of the citizenry if re-elected in the forthcoming gubernatorial election. Why show any hecumions on Governor Adebu Yegao Yetola for the remarkable achievements recorded in all ramifications at Lakpum of Akpum, Obakayode, Adenekan, Afoladi, as well as Akiri of Ikiri Oba, Olatunde, Falabi, flanked by traditional chiefs in the area, maintain that it is pertinent for all and sundry in the state of Oshun to ensure the re-election of Governor Adebu Yegao Yetola in the July 16th gubernatorial election. Addressing the Timi members of the All Progressive Congress at Akumutan Square, as well as St. John's Anglican Primary School, Ikiri. Governor Yetola noted that he possessed the prerequisite intellect and exposition in the art of good governance, has been demonstrated with numerous laudable achievements in infrastructural developments, educational transformations, qualitative health care delivery across the state, as well as general well-being of the citizenry, adding that he is determined to continue with the giant strides for the benefit of all, if re-elected in the forthcoming gubernatorial election. The state chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Prince Boye Gafa Modun, the director general of Oyotola's campaign council, Senator Ajibola Bashir, also highlighted the achievements recorded across the state by Governor Adeboye Gawiyotola, stressing that it is significant for the state to sustain the tempo of developments unfolding under the leadership of Governor Adeboye Gawiyotola in taking the state onto an enviable pedestal. Dignitaries on the campaign train with Governor Adeboye Gawiyotola, including the wife of the governor, Mrs. Kavayat Oyotola, the deputy governor, Mr. Benedict Alabi, the wife of the deputy governor, Mrs. Oyefunke Alabi, the national secretary of the All Progressive Congress, Senator Yola Omish Shore, secretary to the state government, Prince Wale Oyebamiji, head of service, Dr. Olu Beyega Oyebade, chief of staff to the governor, Dr. Charles Akinola, members of the state executive council, members of the state house of assembly, leadership, and members of the All Progressive Congress from across the state, from the governor's office. 
sa ya onon ni de report The present administration in Osho State under the leadership of Mr. Debuego is to last kept faith with all the promises to workers. This is contained in a community signed by the head of service, Dr. Lobo Egawi, at the end of a meeting of the Forum of Heads of Government Agencies in Oshobo. The workers were advised to stay clear of being allowed to be misled by known and unknown forces who are route to malign and castigate the government of Adebu Egao Yitola on Dewey. While lauding the workers for their love and dedication to service, the Forum put on record the magnanimity of the present administration in engendering a strong, virile, and proactive workforce, which in the last four years has made us a work a force to be reckoned with among its peers. The forum recalled how the present administration put rise on the faces of 962 workers either to recommend it for the motion for committing one administrative infraction or the other by pardoning them. The forum commended the regular and full payment of salaries and allowances by the Yetola administration noting that Osho remain one of the few states in Nigeria that is strong and alive to the full implementation of the national minimum wage for workers in addition to the implementation of the 65-year retirement age and 40 years length of service for teachers, while emphasizing that the pronouncements by the state governor at the way of Yetola in all these directives are with immediate effect. The statement further emphasized that the regularization of appointments advancement and conversions, among others, are already ongoing. The promotion, the forum, also emphasized that all other gray areas will be mutually worked out and cleared with immediate effect, while loading the friendly, the worker-friendly disposition of Governor Yitola, the forum urged workers in the state to continue to remain loyal and dedicated to DT as a way of reciprocating the gestures of the governor, which in turn will enhance more and effective service delivery in the entire Ocean Civil Service. The Chairman, National Health Commission, Alaji Zikri Laya Zan, has assured that no, registra no registered freedom from 2022 Hajj will be left in Nigeria at the end of the deadline for airlift of freedom to Saudi Arabia. The NACO Chief Executive Officer gave the assurance at a news briefing on the update of the ongoing 2020 operation in Abuja, he said that the commission will complete the transportation of majority of programs on Sunday and finalize it by the following day in the event of, an, of any leftover. Elaji Zan disclosed that the commission contracted three airlines for the exercise, however regretted that most states were actually not fully prepared, probably, probably because of shortness of notice. So the flight were fluctuating. The NACOM boss hinted that the commission had transported more than 22,000 Nigerian pilgrims to Saudi Arabia, expressing that the airlift will be concluded before the deadline set by Saudi authority. He said that in the few events, there are few ones who are just getting ready. The totality of Nigerian pilgrims will be in Saudi Arabia by Monday. Alaji Azan described this year's side as an emergency one in the sense that he took Saudi Arabia on like the previous time to give a short notice to start preparations. It will be recalled that no fewer than 43,000 Nigerian pilgrims registered through 36 states to participate in this holy pilgrimage in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Super Eagles and Nantes forward Moses Simon has reacted after being nominated for the 2022 CAF Player of the Year Award have unveiled a 20-man shortlist for this year's award, with Simon, the only Nigerian to make the cut. Reports say he will slug it out with stars like Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, Riyad Mahrez, Victor Abubakar, Vincent Abubakar, and Khalidu Koulibaly. Others also shortlisted include Mohamed El Mani, Frank Kisier, Ashraf Azimi, Nabi Keita and Edmund Mendy. Speaking on the nomination, Simon dedicated it to his family, coaches, and teammates. It was regarded that aside, Akikumi Amao is in a 10 man shortlist for the Young Player of the Year Award. Other categories for this year's award are National Team of the Year, Club of the Year, Inter Club Player of the Year, and Coach of the Year. Meanwhile, CAF has announced that 
The nominees for the Women's Player of the Year will be unveiled on Tuesday. China's President Xi Jinping said Hong Kong has worked in protecting the city and must continue long term. The Chinese leader mounted a stern defense of the political system in speech in Hong Kong. Following recent international criticism, reports say Hong Kong is marking 25 years in Britain returned the city to China. It is under tight security as its own Mr. Xi, who is on the first time tree outside of the mainland in two years. In recent years, China has been criticized for increasing its control of Hong Kong and enacting laws and reforms that stifle free speech and dissent. The information has it that the one country or two system principle arose out of agreement between Britain and China and is enshrined in law in Hong Kong. The protections run out in 2047, a deadline which many in Hong Kong have been long worried about. Ukrainian officials say at least 18 people, including one child, have died in overnight Russian missile strike on its region, Odessa region. The state emergency service also confirmed that 16 people were killed and 12 30 injured, while one missile hit a nine story building in the Chevy village. Two more people, including the child, were killed in a separate strike on the village recreation center. It was gathered that Russia had fired dozens of missiles on Ukrainian cities in the past few days as the latest happened in midnight. Footage shows firefighters searching for survivors of the wreckage of the nine-story building, and they are also seen carrying what looked like body of one of the victims in a bag. Odessa National Odessa Region, Regional Administration spokesperson Sherry Braktop said the missiles were launched from Russia war plane over the Black Sea. That ends the media news on OSBC TV. It was edited by Timmy Topway Abdel Karim. Thanks for joining us. Please join us at three for the state news. Good afternoon.